on our first episode this week. Absolute consensus. I cannot move, and therefore, I'm willing to unlearn some of the things that I know. Welcome, it's the boy T45 back in the building, and we're bringing you a very exciting episode today. Uh, I've never been this excited actually as a Pirates fan to have someone so closely related to KZ Chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Patko Mafan, how are you, Dad? Well, I'm good, man. Just fine. And it's a, it's a pleasure for me and uh, a rare opportunity to be hosted like this yeah. in a very nice and cozy setup like this. And, and, and I think you guys really have the future in your hands thank you inspired yeah. by people like yeah. you i must yeah. say it's it's pretty rare um for you to have to be the one giving the answers sure uh, for, for quite a long time you were the one asking the the, the, the questions on on um, platforms like mm -hmm. and, and many other platforms um but more than anything we're here today to 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 speak about you uh but most of all your book yeah, you've done a lot uh, for for radio. You've done a lot. Uh, I mean, everything you've touched in my in my view has has kind of turned into gold. Uh, how's the pressure with the book? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure, um, uh, particularly because there's a lot of stores that have been sold out, mm. and they had to order to get more stock. Mm. I was in East London over the weekend. Yeah. And uh, bag and books in Hemingways yeah. were sold out. Bag and books in Retail Park, Beacon Bay yeah. were sold out. So they're hoping they will be getting stock soon yeah. to make sure that um, uh, people who want to access the book, you know, can access the book. There is, I must say, a very good response. Yeah, yeah. There's a very good response. And the reason is because the book has been written in such a way that many people can relate with yeah you know and uh stories are silokshini there's there's nothing foreign about it yeah and the language and the lingo they uh, people are relating to all of that and that makes the the book difficult to drop after you have picked it up yeah and that's why a lot of people have on average literally finished the book in three days wow. there are people who grabbed the book they battled with putting it down and in three four days max they finished the book yeah yeah and i mean um in in a society in south africa where you know the culture of reading is, is slowly declining um out of all of the things that you could have to, you could have released i don't know uh, an audio book you could have released an album you could have ventured into anything but you chose to write a book how much, like, where does the confidence come from to say, you know what, I can see people are reading less, but I'm still going to give them, you know, a document. How about we, we change the culture of writing books? How about, how about we, we make available books that tell our stories by us? Yeah. How about, you know, so this is what has been happening in my mind that I don't think that Black people are necessarily lazy to read. Mm. I disagree with that. There was a media that interviewed me on the subject of... Uh, you remember the narration that says, if you want to hide anything from black people, put it in the book. Yeah, yeah. I refuse that. Um, back then, in the days of apartheid, when we grew up, you know... Yes, we could say that because most books, they were not talking to us. They were talking about us. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, so you found a lot of books that talked about black people. They were not talking to us. They were not from us. <laughs> you know, yeah. so the more we encourage people like yourself to write your own story. Yeah. It's it's the more it's going to make and and, 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 and reincarnate, you know, their love for books. Mm. Bring it back. Bring back that spark. Bring back that passion. Because then people will identify with the books. You know? Um 
I think people are just tired of reading about the daffodils and Macbeth. Yeah. I mean, all of those Shakespearean books are selling Roman culture. Yeah. How about we sell the Cossa culture from what was called Transkai? How about we sell the Cossa culture from what was called Siskai? The Batswana culture, the Venda culture, you know? So people then will relate with the book. They, they will own it yeah. because they can hear the voice in this book. It is our voice. And it's a familiar story. And it's a familiar story when you write even some of the, of the names in the book, in the narrations, people can probably try and say, okay, even if I don't know this particular one, but I know someone, Ekasiami, who's old, also called by this name. Yeah. So people relate. Yeah. And you write a book and it, it talks about Kwezi, Mtata, and you're like, wow, in a book, my own Kasi, yeah. in a book. Yeah. So people can relate. One of our you very know. old, actually, uh, yeah. in, in this little production that we have, comes from Equazy and Mtata. Absolutely. Man yeah. Designs. Yeah. Uh, but just before we continue this conversation, please make it a point that you subscribe to Man Designs on YouTube. Also make it a point that you do follow me at newkid underscore t45 on Twitter. And uh, are you on social media? I'm on social media. I am, I'm on Facebook. You? I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Um, simple. Pat Komafani. Yeah. All my platforms. I think it's my Insta that is Pat Ko underscore Mafani. But the rest is simply Pat Komafani. I uh, also have another channel on Facebook which is called Pat Komafani Conversations. Yeah. You know. And uh, it's, it's coming up nicely it has about 40,000 uh, followers and on youtube close to 2,000 subscribers on, on youtube mm -hmm. and we we're trying to build something we we're trying to you know uh, unbundle what the uh, the old upper days did yeah. when when it was only the white big corporates like the SABC only that would bring content. Yeah. There's a lot of content, a lot of content with black people. But now black people must tell those stories. Yeah. And this is why my book has been written in the manner in which it was. That, that book is written in, in the manner in which if it inspires you, then you also need to make sure that you inspire others by telling your own story. Yeah. You know, so when you read it, you like, nah, man. If this book sells my whole purpose, mm -hmm. my my whole purpose was that of inspiration first and foremost, and secondarily then to to get into the nitty gritties of the story. Yeah. But first and foremost to inspire, so that somebody can say, nah, if it's like this, writing a story, I mean, writing a book, and I can hear the voice of the author, then writing a book must be easy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you've, you've, everything, like I said earlier on, everything you've touched basically turned into gold. You were a household name being a public relations officer at KZ Chiefs, something that we'd never seen. I don't know who at the time was the public relations officer of any other PSL team. Um, you went on to make waves. Uh, that's the language we use. You, you, made, you went on to make waves in radio. And, and you, now you've written a book and it's doing very well. What can you say has set you apart um, and, and what's made you the person that you are? There's nothing really wow about me. That's the most amazing thing. Mm. On the contrary, I, I probably am not, am not the, the ideal father. I probably am not the ideal husband. I probably am not the ideal sibling. I probably have made all those people around me, um, maybe not even the ideal son, because mm -hmm. the old ideal Sapila, but the reason why I say this is because my book is, is, is titled The Price and Prize of Greatness. Mm -hmm. And with the price, and that's where you see um, that the book actually says to somebody that has made mistakes in life that there's a way and there has to be a way to recover yeah. and overcome. Yeah. Okay, so 
you find elements of vulnerability where situations sometimes are beyond your control and it's just a mess. My book is a podium where you see God thrilled at working with mess yeah. and turning mess into message. Um, if you remember, the Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1 that at the beginning, in the beginning, right at the beginning, it was mess. There was nothing. What was in Yanyin? And God sat there and worked on mess and brought about things. You see? So when we are in messy situations and we, we then try to bring about things that make sense, we actually emulate God. Yeah. When we bring things into existence that were not, you see? Because how do you explain, and I'm, and I'm unpacking the title of the book, with the price first, the price before we come to the price. And and the price is is anything you buy to get to get uh, if you wanna buy uh, this cell phone and yeah. you pay a price for that. And and sometimes not sometimes, all the times we pay a price to get things that we want. Yeah. We pay a price to get education. It looks in Gunamachita you grew up with they're not at this level now. They they are hopeless because they could not pay that price. Yeah. The price of going to school uh, on winter mornings and the grass on the way to school was icy, was icy, and you did not have shoes. And that's the price you paid because your greatness was saying, pay a particular price to reach your dream. Yeah. And there's that greatness inside you that keeps saying, nah, man, you can overcome this. Yeah. You see? And, and then, uh, how do you uh, explain the resilience and the strength and energy and passion to overcome a situation where a young light Elokshin does not even know his father? He doesn't know his father. He grows up. He grows up. He goes to primary, he goes to high school, he goes to boarding school, Bethel College, uh, he still does not know his father. And after that, he registers with UNITRA, he studies, he still does not know his father. He goes to work, he goes to teach. He is probably the most brilliant teacher. He teaches maths and, and, and biology and science and he is the deputy principal. He still does not know his father. But he is focused on things he wants to achieve in life. And later, he goes to radio. Yeah. He's on radio, and which was his childhood dream. And he excels on radio. And one moment later, he's recruited on, 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 on television. Actually, throughout his entire career, he's never applied for jobs. He's always been recruited, targeted, offered jobs, you know, always, always yeah. offered, offered this, recruited. And so even when he's recruited to come to Jobek and do television shows, he still does not know his father until he gets to hear of some guy of Fananai, the man with him, man, there's this guy of Fananai. This guy, you're gonna miss. We're gonna meet this guy because fun and hour and octeta everything. And when they get to meet with this guy, and the guy's name is Andy Len, then Batete man, hey man. Uh, apparently we're brothers. No man. Apparently we're brothers. And hey chap, you sound like me. Now I sound like you. Yeah. So and then why is the old man? Asks the author of the book. No, the old man is in Mount Elif somewhere. What's happening? No, he retired. He's just sitting there at home now and he's not well. Okay, well, we've got to organize a trip to visit him. Yeah. But before that trip happens, the next phone call that arrives is the phone call that says the old man is late. Oh my goodness. So the old man dies and the young man is not, the young man by then is 35. He's not met his father. So, 
he decides he's going to go to Mount Relief for the first time in his life to go and bury the old man. So he goes all the way. He takes the M3 like you're going to Devon from Joburg and then Peter Maris back, he goes to or Cockstart and then bang, he lands at Mount Elif. He tells everybody, listen, I'm looking for a funeral. I've come to bury so and so. And he gets to the funeral and his blood brother sees him from a distance and he goes meet him. And they both go together to uh, the service inside the tent. And uh, an arrangement is made that although the part of the session where the coffin is opened and people, the mourners, can see, yeah. you know, and grieve for the last time and whatever, you know, that, that segment had passed. But a special arrangement is made with him. There's someone special here who would love to see this old man. So he gets to see the old man. He stands on top of the coffin, seeing his old man for the first time. The old man is quiet, lying in that bloody cold steel coffin. He can't say a word. And he can't say, my son, I love you. He can't say, my son, what do you want to be in life? He can't say, my son, as a man, you do this, you don't do that. You don't do this, you do that. He can't say that. All the young men that desire to hear from a father modeling. He can't get no modeling because the old man is asleep. He takes it as a man to say, you know what? Let me go dent the universe again now that I've seen the old man. Yeah. He goes back. He continues to dent the universe. Back to back, he's recruited by Kaizam Daung to go replace another PRO of Kaiser Chiefs. So, though he sees his father lying there, he he tells himself that he's got no excuse to make flops in life. Otherwise, it would undermine the efforts of the maternal family, which was grooming him up. Yeah. And the author of the book is groomed by, by uncles, you know, anything he knows about manhood, mm -hmm. he's seen it from the uncles, you know, and all of that, and the, and the, and the grandfathers. And it probably is something that we should be saying today in South Africa that is infested with a social ills such as gender-based violence. Yeah. That all fathers out there, you know, make an effort to play a part in your boy's life, particularly boy child. Boy child is troubled. Boy child is angry. Boy child is hurting because boy child has been deprived the opportunity to grow under the direction and the guidance of the hand of the father. And so boy, boy, boy child could be bleeding emotionally. And so if you are a man and you know that you got a child somewhere, find your child, particularly when it's boy child, and give some love to boy child, get to understand what they dream of in life, yeah. what they want to be. If you can kick some doors for him, do that. Let him say, you know, Today, I am where I am, thanks to Itai Malami, because he did this for me. Yeah. At least he, or he just made a call to say, my son is coming there. Please listen to my son. Accommodate him. Yeah. And, 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 and make opportunities for him. Yeah. Just a call. Just a call, you know. Um, so the author of the book did not have that opportunity, but... I spun that in here, ah Hashem, ah Hashem, yeah. why me, why me, I spun you, why me? No, 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 I spun you, why me? Um, all of us. And that greatness in you is not sitting with your dad, it's not sitting with your mom, who's Zen Zen, it's a greatness in you. Yeah. You've got to allow it to push you to go forward, wherever you go. Let people say, wow. Yeah. 
If we could all make somebody say, wow, just one person. Yeah. Can you imagine how better South Africa would be if, if all of us embraced the responsibility to inspire one person? And I'm saying one person, not ten. Each one of us inspire one. Just one person inspire one person. And South Africa would be a better place. So, so as you read the book, you'd get to discover no man, I'm doing a I'm doing in an ideal home with a with a father and a mother and and another sibling or two siblings and that's a perfect home. They can go to church in a Mazda three two three, bong give a pelele uyo and and when they get there, they will find their seat for the entire family because there's four or five of them. It's perfect, perfect couple, perfect children and gender representation. It's a boy and a girl and. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's that's ideal. But the author of that book is not from that ideal environment. He also made his 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 life mistakes. He he also had a, a traumatic divorce and all of these things. But it is when you you look at that mess that you realize that but God. Yeah. <laughs> you keep saying, I've made mistakes. But God, so generous with his second chances. But God, you know, some of the mistakes are our mistakes. Some of the mistakes are our parents' mistakes. But God. And God doesn't care whether it's your mistakes or parents' mistakes. But God, you know. So it's a, it's a journey of grace. My book is a journey of grace. And that's why the chapters are, are written or marked in the index as Grace 1, yeah. Grace 2. Instead of Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Grace 1, Grace 2. Because as you read, you're going to see Grace. Umangale, how does this person beat this? And it's not his power. Mm. It's the powers from above. You know. So it is that kind of a book. It is a kind of a book where you pay a price sometimes through life defects and they could be biological or medical defects i mean how do you explain a youngster that goes to boarding school and a boarding school he has a bad wetting problem for five years a trauma right through right through he paid a little every morning when other boys go out when they go out to the assembly you know he has to to check with the amateur pumila wonge, pumila wonge, and then matras. Take it out to the sun to dry out. But God, because while he is being tormented by this, on the other hand, he also has serious responsibilities. Yeah. He's running the entire college's program from a timekeeping point of view because he's the timekeeper of the college. He's the bell ringer of the college. Yeah. Now he has a defect. It is eroding his self-esteem yeah. potentially. He can come out a wreck. But he refuses to be a wreck. More so because on the other hand, he has to run a college program. Every time Gupeli period, it is him that is ringing the bell. So he's got a watch, which he is ahead of everybody in the college in terms of checking the time. So when it is five minutes to the end of the maths period, he stands up, he walks out. He does not ask a teacher. He has the authority to stand up while the teacher is teaching and walk out with his books. Because the bell must ring. Because the bell must ring. Because the bell must ring. So on one hand, he's got this defect that's eating him up. On the other hand, he is literally running the college program. So he has a serious sense of responsibility. He has a, 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 a hectic podium of authority. Because he, he, is, he is authority. He doesn't have authority. He is authority. You see? And so this is, this is where you kind of see that God has a sense of humor. Mm. With our defects and mistakes and our flops, he keeps providing other things that make people out there say, wow, yeah. you know. <laughs> so then you, you come to one conclusion. 
There is no need for a stupid suicide. Yeah. If some of us can go through that hell, then there's no need for suicide. There's not even a need. Suicide is, it's, suicide is worse. It is to a superlative degree. Yeah. There's not even a need to give up. Let's just talk about give up. Yeah. There's no need. You can't. You can't give up. So as you read that book, you will also realize in your life journey, there are episodes, some of them were out of your control. And I know you couldn't give up. Yeah. No, you couldn't give up. And that and that's the price. The the price is that sometimes even before God is amazing, even before you are done with this defect. But but it's cost to take money take it is a kubuka gives pure, and that's the price of greatness. I'm like it's great. And, and while on one hand you're listening to the painful bleeding cuts of your defects, on the other hand, you're being polished with extraordinary talents and gifts that make the whole country say, wow. You, like what you were, ta- what, what you were saying earlier on about whatever you're touching, turning to gold and, you know, you... You recruited for jobs. When you get there, you excel, you win awards. Yeah. And the author of the book then wins PSL awards. He wins Kaiser Chiefs awards. He wins Eastern Cape government awards for being an ambassador of the Eastern Cape government in the whole of South Africa. He wins uh, the best breakfast show awards. He wins, he wins the best breakfast show presenter awards, not once then he is even inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. The first one from the Eastern Cape, Musasa Zotedis Tos. Yeah. So he makes that history. Then you say, no, man. If I also grew up without my father, I also can win certain awards. They may not be broadcast awards, but there's somewhere where I can excel. And take Ikamale Kasiami if they was a Tua or Nongshua or Tofim Baba or Kokodala, but but take Ikamale Laliam and put it on the map in spite of it all. Yeah. In spite of it all, you know. So, because we're not in a perfect world, we're in a, in a world that is, that is full of sin, that is full of chaos, that is full of mess that is smelling of, uh, you know, of our own uh, stubbornness. But even though, in spite of that, we still have to succeed, we still have to, to let the greatness in us because in all of us, there's greatness inside you. You're watching this show, there is greatness, trust me. There's greatness inside you. There are certain episodes of your life that are an inspiration to others where others will say, wow, but how did you come out of that? Have you ever had people say, how did you come out of that? Or how did he come out of that? How did she come out of that? How did she overcome that? Look at how beautiful she is now. Look at how beautiful he is now. How did you make it? So that's the essence of the book. The book then should do that to you, so you also do that to someone. Uh, inspiration, ngayboni content le mm. about Kaza Chiefs, about playing golf, about life lessons from golf in the book, about choral music, you know, um, about studying choral music, about the ability to train choirs like Zanele de Papang, and and we we can see all of that. We can see all of that. We can see all of that content. The content is fine, but most importantly. What does it do to you? Does it inspire you? If it inspire, if it's if it inspires you, then you ought to inspire others as well. Absolutely, and you know, um, one of the last things I would have wanted to ask you, um, which you've answered quite well, is, you know, when you wrote the book, what, what, who did you see, or did who did you have in mind? You know, that at the end of the day, this is the person I want to be carrying the book. Before you can answer that question, I, I, I kind of have an idea of the answer. You know, young and old, 
anyone going through anything correct anyone living a life of yeah. purpose no look, wanting to look, look look man people are bleeding out there people are bleeding from all sorts of problems yeah and some are acting when you meet them a shopping mall over to pampa and you think this guy is okay on the Sabbath day or at the Sunday school, you think they are fine. People are hurting. Particularly people who have chosen to uh, identify themselves or to be called the children of God. Those people are targeted. Yeah. They, are, they are targeted. Make no mistake. They are targeted. So, if you feel sometimes that, I, I remember, I remember there was a man, if I may, I hope I won't preach here, but there was a man we talk about in the book of John chapter 9, the young man born blind, and on the Sabbath day, underline on the Sabbath day as Jesus was leaving the synagogue yeah. or the temple, they say he meets this man born blind, Ekonini and Gonzo. Worshippers go past him every time. Maybe they hoi money, 20 rand, 50 rand, 10 rand, whatever. They, they, this is the best they can do yeah. for him. And, and, and then he hears that the man was born blind. You know, and I love what Jesus does, uh, you know. Um, and he clarifies issues because he knows that we have issues. Some of us want to suggest issues, Guguti. Itama like Lalim knows more because that's why he's born blind. He addresses those issues. He says, No, 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 it's not about that. It's not about that. Uh, this day had to come so that God can be glorified. And he kneels down and he spits on the ground and he makes, with his saliva, he makes mud and he puts it on the eyes of the man born blind. He says, Go wash at Shiloh. And the man goes to wash at Shiloh. But I like the exercise of Jesus kneeling down. And to use ground because man was made from ground yeah. in Genesis during creation. Yeah. Man was made from ground. So now it is the reconstruction and development program of man. Yeah. He kneels down on ground again to remake this man. The man that we have called hopeless. The man that we've given names. The man that we've called black sheep of the family. Yeah. The man that we've called beyond repairs, he kneels down to remake that man. He makes him from scratch. He gives him new eyes, brand new eyes. Well, some of us that look down on this man, we have eyes that are 60, 80, 90% worn out. And this man is given new eyes. The same God that used dust to create men uses dust to recreate the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I see it. So, so if, if, if they call, I don't know what they call you because of your mistakes and because of, of your flops. They probably call you the black sheep of the family. They call you black sheep of the family because you are a PK, you are a pastor's kid, and yet... You smell beer, you're a pastor's kid, you have children all over, you're a pastor's kid, Batuli Sela, and all of these things. And you're thinking of giving up. No ways. No ways. You can't. You can't. You can't give up. And so, if, if, if they call you a mess, please know. <laughs> please know. There's someone that is excited to work with a mess. And he, he, has, he, has, he has worked with the author of the book. He's still working with the author of the book. He is still a project under construction. The, the maker is not finished with him yet. Mm. He's still working at him. And I want to say somebody that's, that's, uh, that's watching the show, a uh, new kid in the vlog, that God is still at work with you. He's still, you are still a project that he's still producing. Um... Right through until Jesus comes, God is still busy with you. He, there will never be a time when he says he's finished with you until we get to eternity. But he is still busy with you. 
He is still busy with you. So anybody then that looks down at you, at you and say, I forget. Forget. Just tell that person that God is still busy with me. God is the, is the greatest dealer. While, while we deal with his business, and doing summer school program here and there and preaching here, while we're dealing with his business, he is busy dealing with us. Yeah. He's the greatest dealer I've seen in my life. He's still dealing with me, by the way. He's still dealing with me. So that book is The Journey of Grace. You've got to check it out. Um, you've never seen a person perhaps so forgiven by God and so loved by God and yet with so many defects and mistakes. And it is a message that we all have to embrace in the whole bar. There is grace that is available to all men. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I know in my heart, I'm convinced actually that we've got a bestseller in waiting. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Let's let's go buy the book. You'll find it at bookstores like CNA exclusive books, bag and books. You know, let's go to the bookstores and and buy the book. You know why? Because we all have a duty to inspire somebody. Absolutely. That book will compel us to inspire somebody. I I got the message. I'm definitely getting myself a copy. Mr. Farko Mafani, thank you so much for coming here and you know inspiring us thank uh, you, you. Know, we've 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 been fortunate you know part, part part of the reason we even have setups like these is because you know we didn't have to look too far for inspiration yeah. and and yet again you've inspired uh, it's a book from the earth it's not a book from heaven there's no angel that fell from heaven to write the book yeah it is a book from earth it is a book written by a mess book written by somebody like you you know so it relates to you because it's written by somebody like you absolutely mm, so let's let's go tell those stories and, and and just encourage one another thank you so much yeah <laughs> and again please don't forget to subscribe to man designs on youtube make it a point that you follow me on twitter at new kid underscore t45 and you can find Mr. Paco Mafani as Paco Mafani on all social media platforms. That's right. Thank you again yeah, for coming I'll, I'll here. subscribe as well. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. That would be so much for us. Yeah. This has been your 19th episode. Make sure, again, you click that little bell notification to make it a point that every time we drop an episode, you are the first person to know. Check out the new kid on the blog. Thank you. <laughs>